it real I'm independent, I don't need no deal I'm Jaws on the beat, I got flow that kills Do my thing with a few G's, Lauren Hill Okay, so let's break down Initial Audio's Sector Synth. Now with this project here, I've used four different versions of Sector and then three loops just to create that feel you heard at the start there. If we take the loops out, what we're left with is all of the instrumentation. We've just added some percussion loops in there to give it a feel, just to show that just using instances of sector, we can get the feeling for an entire track and certainly get all of the instrumentation done inside it. Now to create this, I've just used a few of the presets that come with sector and tweak them ever so slightly, all with built-in effects. So there's no other processing going on. There's over 700 different presets that come with sector and they're very usable and cover a wide range of music production. What a sector is and the reason it's so versatile is it's a wavetable synthesizer. This type of synthesizer, instead of giving us a simple oscillator that can only do a couple of wave types, a wavetable instead has the ability to host many different wave types and we can cycle through them, allowing us to give far more texture and subtleties in sound. Let's break down how the GUI of Sector work and what you're going to be presented with and then how you can tailor and create the sounds that you want in your music. What we'll do is we'll start up at the top left and work our way through the oscillator section and then through this middle section and through the right hand section. Then lastly, we'll go across the bottom keyboard section, which contains a lot of additional functionality that's inside Sector. So right up in the top left hand corner, the first thing we're presented with is actually our sub oscillator. We've got an on off switch straight away. If we were to take the chords patch that we were using. If we switch the sub oscillator on and play our chords patch back. We can hear there's now a large sub being presented underneath it. We can dial it back in level to sit where we would like. Let's just choose the octave in which it sits in. And how driven we wish it to be. It's a very useful sound design tool. When creating a bass patch, it's very useful to have a nice, clean sub oscillator. You can stick in the low end and know it's always going to be there. The drive option adds additional harmonics and can help blend sounds together and give it a bit of flavor. But having it there is overly useful. In this instance, we have it switched off, disabled, as we're working primarily on the wavetables and the next section, which is a sample. So as you can see, just next to the sub oscillator, we have something that says on and diamond, and this is actually a sampler. So if we click where it says diamond, we in fact have a set of factory instruments and multi-samples, as well as if you own a heat up, you have all of the heat up kit samples within here as well. So you can extend it a lot further. There's only a few controls here really on the sampler. We have color, which is a bandpass filter. We have a level adjustment and we have a send to filter one or two. If we were to disable the sample patch on this particular instrument, we in fact have nothing left. It's purely being driven by these samples. There's a little top section here attached to the sampler section and quite simply loop will cause the sample to loop over if it's something of a one shot that you wanted to loop. Track will in fact pitch the sample across a keyboard range and keep it within the correct pitching. Um, multi samples are not affected. So if we lo load a multi sample bank, that won't be affected. Color enables a band pass filter. Filter. Pitch is an adjustment of where the sample pitch initially goes from. Now let's load up the lead that sat within our musical arrangement. So here's something slightly different. We can see we're still using a lead sample, but this time within our wavetables, they are engaged and the level is in there. So the two wavetables are labeled OS A and OS B and appear just below the sub oscillator and the sample section. These are our very in-depth tools for sound design. Now the way they work is actually quite simple. We can see the wavetable itself presented here on the left and we can see the next series in the table is represented with a slightly phased out version of itself. 
And so if you click on the waveform, it will give you everything else in that wavetable that you can move through. But remember, this, these are just the waveforms within this singular wavetable. We can choose different wavetables as well by simply hitting load. And then the factory menu that organized very sensibly into styles. Back on the waveform itself, we also have an edit option. This allows us to dive really deeply into the waveform and we can actually edit each one individually. This allows for pretty much limitless creation in terms of the waveforms. Across the bottom, we've got the individual cycles for everything across the waveform and highlighted is the one that we're currently using, so 12. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna bring this back to one and we can see that's represented in the GUI at the top. We can manipulate this waveform by clicking within the grid, changing how it behaves. Now these are all based upon the change types we've got over here on the right hand side. We can drive it and force it to be limited. We can also morph the position to very quickly move between our different ones. Now, what if we just wanted to create something like a sine wave to work from? Well, we would then have to adjust our grid to something like a one for one or a four over one, and then we can create pretty much any wave. So here we can create a sine wave. We could use the same method to create a square wave by using the straight bar options. So this gives us pretty much limitless design in what we're after. Now it goes a little bit further in that we can add noise into the wave as well with this noise tool here. By clicking on and we can push it up or down, we can introduce noise into the waveform, giving it kind of an analog feel and not a perfect sign. It's a really nice touch to be able to generate that in a waveform rather than add noise over the top later. So as well as being able to use wavetables and completely modify the waveform inside Sector, we've also got pretty common tools that are going to allow us to manipulate it nice and quickly. If we look at us B here, it's quite prevalent in this sound. It's this main movement of the lead here. The thing that causes that movement is the morph here is being manipulated and we can see it move around and it adjusts the wavetable so it plays slight variations of a very similar waveform. That introduced with the fact we have phase manipulation going on as well. Using these tools allows us to create a real analog feel to the music and sounds that are being created with Scepter. We'll dive into how to create some of those manipulations and movements as we go through further in the GUI of Scepter. So let's move over to the middle section. Now, when you first load up Sector, you'll be presented with the browser, which very simply looks like this here. On the left-hand side, we've got categories organized, and the right-hand side are the presets within each category. You're able to favorite any ones that you particularly like, which is a nice touch, as there's so many to go through. You can do this by simply right-clicking. So the Broken Games preset that we were tweaking here in our track, we can simply right-click and it will be starred for us. And we can browse it via expansions as well. So we've got a couple of expansions installed here. We could filter it down to particular sounds and it will give us just ones that exist within those expansions. And just next to where it says the expansion that you're browsing, we have the preset name and we just have a next and a save preset for when you've customized them. Now, just at the top above this preset window, we have some controls and some macro controls. They relate to some of the other options. There are five windows, in fact, that appear in this sense at GUI and they're controlled by the tabs at the bottom here. For example, we've got OSC Plus, and this is voice control for each of the individual oscillators. And we can modify the pitch, the detune, the stereo whip, the phase, level, and wavetable position. We can see the wavetable is moving to different parts of the wavetable, and that happens right here. Let's show an example of this by adding the level of oscillator one in. So we'll switch it back on. We'll go to level and we'll bring the level in. We can hear that difference straight away. If we were to bring it back out.
Now, how many operators you have per voice are set via the voices option in here. If you have this set to one voice, it's actually disabled entirely. We can push it all the way up to 16 voices, thus giving us 16 options. One thing to note when you're working with the OS Plus window is that it does override anything set over in the left hand side. So if you've made, for example, level adjustments and wavetable adjustments, then trying to make those adjustments over on the oscillators will be overridden by what's already done here. So just remember, if you're going to use the OS Plus to then continue working in there rather than going back to the original operators. The sequencer works very simply as a step sequencer. So if we were to play a singular note, we can change how that note performs in the sequence. So we can put any number of triggers in, switch it on, and a long note will now trigger these individual steps. Simple as that. There are multiple different sequences ready to load. To help you get melody ideas really, really quickly. Once the note's been placed in to make it longer, you can simply drag it out. And to disable it, we just switch it off. Even if there are commands in here, they will be bypassed. The effects section is incredibly powerful. There are enough effects in here for us to completely modify our sound and mix it within Sector itself. So we don't need to use any external effects. They're ready to go out of the box. We have Effect Rack 1 and Effect Rack 2. And we can choose what is input into each individual rack with the input section here. For example, Filter 1 and 2 at the moment both run into Effect Rack 1. By clicking it, we can have it so that just Filter 1 would run in here. And perhaps anything sent to Filter 2 would run into Effect rack two and the blend of what goes here is set on each individual element up here so sub us for example has a filter one or two control so does the sample and both of the oscillators so you could send one oscillator to one effect rack and the sample section to another these are all completely rearrangeable as well so we can completely adjust the type of sound we're after if we wanted the reverb to be right at the end of the chain we simply click drag and place it right at the end this allows us to be really flexible in our sound design post creating all of our custom waveforms. Last in this middle section, we have basic settings over sector and the interface can be changed pretty heavily. I like this dark mode, um, but there is you know, a few different options in here. Um, we can click where it says, say like blue and orange, for example, and we can choose different options. Rainbow mode just highlights the key things being modulated on a sector with a rainbow style graphic instead of a solid color. MPE mode supports things like the row Seaboard controller that has effectively a 3D touch feel to it, uh, and Sector can take advantage of that extra playability if we desire to disable all animations to save the tiniest bit of CPU. We've then got completely custom GUI colors if you really want to configure everything to your heart's content. I am quite happy with the dark GUI here. The three macro controls at the top can be configured using the matrix, and we'll look at that towards the end of this breakdown. So let's move over to the far right hand side now. Now we've got two controls up the top. We've got drive and this drives the whole signal, adding extra harmonic, allowing us to have some real flavor. Check this out. Just giving an extra harmonic boost, a bit of analog vibe to it. And then we've got volume, very simply a gain control. And I've just used this volume control to balance all of these instruments together in this project. Below that, we've got filter one and two, and these are completely automatable and come with the pretty standard filter controls you would expect. So obviously controlled via our cutoff, and we've got a GUI representation of what's going on here. And in this instance, filter one is linked to a controller that allows it to grow over time. It's just manipulating the cutoff there. Now the resonance as well will represent in the GUI, we can have a really extreme resonance. 
can be useful for just getting something like a lead just to cut through in the mix. We can drive this separately as well. So it's a separate drive on the filters. Remember, we can send to filter one or two and a balance between them. So we can drive them individually to add an extra little bit of flavor before the overall drive. And this is post any kind of drive and distortion we've added on the way in. We've then got pretty standard AHDSR controls, attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release, as well as our key tracking and envelope amounts being applied to switch between two filters. We've simply got one and two here. And then the filter types, low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, and then we've got an analog low and high as well. And just below we've got our slope control. We can go to 12 or 24. Below that, we've got our envelope control. So obviously we've got that envelope control in the filter section, the plus or minus. This is how the envelope actually looks and it's built with a simple ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, and release. And we can just move those with the controllers at the bottom here, or we can actually click on the points on the GUI and adjust it that way as well. And let's move into the bottom of sector now, this section where we've got the keyboard. Across the top here, we've got a set of different controls, and this is where all the routing and manipulation can really be applied inside sector. So on the keyboard side of things, we've got like our velocity curves. Uh, we can do mono, always trigger, the number of voices, portamento slides, for example, the usual things you're going to expect on that performance. Then we've got things like expression. So here we can have separate expression curves for different parameters parameters within sector. And there's a slider here, we can have up to eight of these. So we can choose the parameter we would like. For example, velocity can have its, its own independent curve in here, but then we could also apply it to something like the modulation wheel, which is going to have its own independent curve. We can then choose the destination of where these are going to go. So the modulation wheel with its own custom curve could then apply to pretty much any parameter inside sector. So we could create this to be a very powerful tool in the expression performance. This is especially useful for things like string instruments. Then got ADSR one and two. So we've got two attack, decay, sustain, release envelopes in here, and they're done in the traditional slider ADSR style. And then they've got a destination on each side as well as an amount control just attached next to them. Like the expression, they can be linked to literally any parameter within sector. We've then got modulation envelopes one and two. Modulation envelope one in this patch, for example, is linked into the oscillator A and B phase. So this modulation envelope applies to the phase of oscillator A and B when it plays. <laughs> You can see a little representation here of the envelope manipulating the phase. We've got amount controls here, and as before, destination wise, we can send it pretty much anywhere we need to. We've got mod envelope one, two, and three. Moving on from there, we've got two sets of two LFOs. We've got LFO one and two in one batch and three and four in another. They can be synced up or able to run loose or even switched into bipolar mode. Retrigger is super useful so the LFO can keep running forever, which is very important if it's not on sync as it can quite easily drift out of phase being slightly off or retrigger means the LFO will start off at zero again each time a note is triggered. If we head over to LFO three and four here, for example, Example, we can see that it's linked to that filter one cutoff because it's on retrigger. That's why the filter retriggers and starts at that same point each time a note triggers. And last but not least, we have the matrix. The matrix here is where we can link things to the macro controls, for example. So we could have a number of sources and a number of destinations linked up to a single macro controller. We could do sources macro one and then multiple destinations and keep repeating macro one to have it control multiple things all in one. So that has been a breakdown of sector and the GUI and how you can build a desired sounds in it. I hope the video was helpful for you guys and please do go down the demo of sector and thoroughly have a dig through it and make sure you really do enjoy it. It's superb for your music production.